Hi, I'm Sandrine Blake, Manager of Member Events and Experience here at Amidacare. Thank you for joining us for today's online Live Your Life Wellness session. Today's session is sponsored by Amidacare, a Medicaid health plan designed to provide care for those living with or at elevated risk of HIV. At Amidacare, we believe that staying healthy is much more than just doctor's visits and medication. We believe in the whole person, mind, body, and spiritual wellness. We also look at aspects of life such as healthy food and housing. Stay tuned for more information on how you can contact us at Amidacare. Thank you. Enjoy. Hi everybody and Happy New Year. My name is Marina Braff. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist coming to you from California. I'm so excited that you're joining me right now and taking some time to really give some careful thought and consideration to how you want 2021 to be. So with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so you can see what exactly I'm talking about and how you can make this happen. Okay, so the first thing I want to start off by saying is there's a lot of commotion around the New Year's about being a new year, new you. And I want to really fight back against that and tell you, you don't need to be a new you. I'm really encouraging all of you to just be better versions of yourself. And I think considering where we were at in 2020, it should be hopefully fairly easy to do that. So as you guys are thinking about intentions and resolutions and how you want to step into this new year, I really want you to emphasize the, the fact that you're not trying to be a different you, you're just trying to be a better version of yourself. Okay, so here is the plan for today. So we're going to do a brief 2020 recap and an opportunity to reflect on 2020 because I think that that's important to do as you prepare to look ahead towards this year and ensuring that this year is different than last year. You really have to think about what went right last year, what was hard last year, so on and so forth. Then we're going to talk about where we are now, aka the new year. Hooray. And then we're going to look towards 2021 and really start to get into the intentions and the resolutions and figure out what it is that we want to be doing differently and how we want to be showing up differently. I'm going to give you guys a little brief explanation on intentions versus resolutions. And obviously I'm sure you guys can tell that I have a proclivity towards setting intentions as opposed to resolutions since that is my sixth slide, but I'm going to share a little bit more information about why exactly that is. And then we'll talk about how to find accountability buddies and get your family in on setting intentions and creating a plan and we'll wrap things up. Okay. So 2020, have you guys all caught your breath from that craziness? Um, I don't even know really how to put into words what 2020 was like, but I'm very glad it's over. So quarantine began nine, nine months ago, and I guess now we're approaching 10 months ago. And since then, you've experienced a tremendous amount of changes and challenges. Some of them being like, you know, isolated from your loved ones. Some of you may still have not seen your family, even with the holidays that just passed. You've been separated from your colleagues. And I think we can all, especially now, really appreciate how much our colleagues support us and how beneficial it is to be in close contact with them after not being able to in this last year. You've had to establish a new work-life balance. Some of you may have lost loved ones. You've assumed new roles. I think so many parents are really giving a lot of credit to teachers now, now that some of us have had to step into that in the midst of 2020. So the reason that I'm bringing this up is that this year has been a challenge, period. And it's one that we did not think that would be going on for so long. So while yes, we are in 2021, we're still experiencing a lot of the challenges, a lot of the lockdowns, a lot of the limitations that were apparent in 2020. And so because of that, cumulative fatigue and or quarantine is real. We are burnt out. And especially because months and months and months ago, we kept having these different milestones that we thought, okay, once I get here, it'll be better. Once I get here, it'll be better. Once I get here. And so many of us were like, we just got to get to the new year. 
And while yes, that is a milestone that we've made it this far, like sheesh, um, it's still not over. And so if you guys are feeling this cumulative fatigue, I just want you to recognize that this is normal. Everyone is experiencing it. Everyone is over it. Everyone is tired and ready to be done. And so I say all that just so that as we continue throughout this webinar, you offer yourself and your loved ones and everyone around you just some more grace as we continue to get through 2021 and to do so in a way that's happy and healthy. Um, lastly, I don't know how many of you agree. I feel like everyone, but 2020 was one of those years where it just felt like Murphy's Law, right? Like sometimes it was like whatever could go wrong went wrong. And so we're all still experiencing and dealing with the ripple effects of all that. But humor helps. So I encourage you guys to all find some humor. Okay. All that to be said, like I mentioned earlier, I want you guys to reflect on 2020 before you look ahead to 2021. And maybe some of you have already done this. Maybe some of you have done your reflections, you've done journaling, but if not, and or if you want more before you really dig into what you want this year to be like, think of this as an opportunity to reflect on times past. And the three questions that I have, they're, they're intentional questions. So the first one being what has gone right this year or yeah, in 2020, last year. And so the reason that I asked that question is because this, because this year has been a challenge, there's been a lot of things that probably haven't gone right. And it's really easy to rattle those off. The things that got canceled, the things that got postponed, the things that didn't happen, the things you're looking forward to that didn't you know, come to fruition, all of those things. And I want you to take an opportunity to flip the script and doing that is so important because it's going to make you guys feel like that 2020 wasn't a total waste and that some things actually did really go well and did maybe even go according to plan, even though a lot of you guys have chunked or, you know, tossed off 2020 as just being a waste of a year. So there's an opportunity to find reasons why it may not have been. The second question is, is what are you most proud of? And for some, this is going to be easy. For some, it's going to be really hard. The big thing that I want you guys to keep in mind as you're trying to identify what this is exactly is that this doesn't have to be big. This does not have to be monumental. This doesn't have to be you got a promotion. This doesn't have to be that you got married. You know, this can be small, like you got up day after day and you showed up to work and you kept your kids healthy and you kept yourself healthy. That's something to be proud of. Absolutely. The last question is what are the biggest challenges that you overcame? And you'll see in a couple slides why I asked this question. But really the teaser is that in recognizing the biggest challenges you overcame, you start to recognize your own inner strength and your own inner strength is going to keep carrying you through this year and 2022 and beyond. And also noticing and taking note of what your biggest challenges are and have been is going to help to build up your confidence and your sense of resiliency that you can continue to deal with challenges even if we think our hardest year is behind us. Okay, here we are now. We're in the new year. We made it to 2021. Oh, really felt like a long year. Um, so now what? We're in 2021, now what? Groundhog's Day continues for some of us. We still feel like we're doing the same thing. We still kind of feel like, okay, like we made it to the new year, but it feels exactly like 2020. And I understand that. Again, you know, we had this expectation that come 2021, come January 1st, things were going to go back to normal. And I think that's all because we were holding out for this like glimmer of hope. And so you guys may be in this moment of like, ugh, it's still the same. Ugh, it's still a challenge. I'm still dealing with the same challenges that I was in December. I get that. And that's why it's important to recognize the fatigue that's built up that I talked about a couple slides ago. And on top of that, 
for you guys on the East Coast, the weather has worsened. And so it's harder to see people because you guys can't really just like go outside. Um, and with all of that and with the duration that COVID has been going on, we're all craving a sense of familiarity. So that to being said, and this expectation versus reality piece, you have an opportunity here. And this is why I'm so glad that you guys have taken the time to jump on this webinar. You have an opportunity to rise up for 2021 or fall down, as dramatic as that sounds. And I'm hoping that through this webinar, it empowers you guys to rise up, to rise to the occasion, to up level, to be better used. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you how. Okay, so before we get into the nitty gritty of all of this, I want you to think about what you want 2021 to look and feel like. And both this slide and the slide when I asked you guys to reflect on 2020, um, feel free to pause the webinar and journal things out or journal out some thoughts before you continue on throughout the rest of the slides if that works better for you to be active in all of this. But I want you to think of a word or an affirmation that really frames what you're hoping 2021 is going to be like. And the reason I encourage all of you to create a word or select a word and come up with an affirmation is because you want it to kind of act as a mantra as you go throughout this year. And as you're faced with you know difficult decisions or not really remembering your why or your purpose or what your goals are, this word will hopefully anchor you into that and allow you to really soak that in and remind you of where you're trying to get to. Okay. Um, the next piece is, is to get your loved ones in on it. There's actually going to be a slide at the very end of this where I'm going to go into detail about how you can do that. But the last question on this is, what is it that you need to make your vision of 2021 happen. And so if your word is something like healthy, right? I need a lot of ours, especially after nine, 10 months of COVID. Um, what do you need to do to make it happen? What do you need to do on a tangible level? So what equipment do you need to buy? Which, ugh, good luck, because everyone seems to be buying workout equipment. Um, do you need to buy different food? Do you need to buy new running shoes? So that's like the tangible piece of what you need to do to make it happen. And then there's the mental and emotional piece. So what is it that's really going to help you get into that mindset of getting 2021 to be what you want it to look like and what it, you want it to feel like? Okay. And there's so many different ways that you can also do this and create visual reminders. Vision boarding is one of my favorite things in the world. And the and it's great to do around the New Year's. So all you do, and I really encourage you to do this with actual magazines and paper and glue and scissors as opposed to Pinterest, but Pinterest works too if you don't have access to that. But the idea with a vision board is you take pictures of anything that really calls to you of what you want this year to be like. So there could be images of travel, there could be images of children, of a wedding, of a garden, of a new home. And you want to have this vision board, again, another reason why I like to actually do it with real paper, is that you are posting it somewhere that you're gonna see it every single day. And that's another way of kind of using the vision board as almost like a, a visual affirmation, so to speak. Um, so that as you're going throughout your day, as you're getting up each morning, you're like, okay, that's what I want this year to be like. Okay, that's what I want to accomplish. That's what I want to focus on, okay? Um, and that's perfect. Like if you just do a vision board, you can do all this other stuff too, but that is wonderful. The other thing that you can do, which is really fun if you're into journaling, is you can write a letter to yourself reflecting on 2021 as if it's future you. So you could write like, you know, dear Marina, it's December 31st, 2021. Let me tell you, 2021 was quite a year. I accomplished blah, blah, blah. I visited so-and-so, you know, I really met these goals. And by writing it, it 
triggers memories. It triggers a visual in your own brain. And so it's another visualization tool that can be really helpful. And just like that vision board, I would want you to keep that letter somewhere where you can reference back to it and you can imagine that feeling of December 31st in real time next year or in 2021. Um, imagine what it's like when you're like, oh my God, I actually did this. So cool. Very empowering. Okay. Okay. So I told you guys that I was going to give you my, my truest of feelings regarding intentions versus resolutions. So let's start with resolutions because everyone knows resolutions. My problem with resolutions is that people feel like they have to do it. There's like a pressure comes with them. And sometimes that's why they don't do it <laughs> because they feel like they have to. And it just seems like this burden and this stressor. That's not fun. The other piece is that they make these really big lofty goals, which, hey, I'm not trying to tell you guys to like tone down your dreams and your goals, but be mindful of like how much you can really accomplish and how much you can really do. And they, these resolutions, they're all meant to happen at once. So it's like, okay, it's January 1st and I want to get promoted and I want to travel the world and I want to get married. It's like, okay, all great things, but like, when are you supposed to do all that? And like, how are you going to do all that? It's not tangible. So intentions are different because intentions, it, it can be an actual thing that you want to accomplish. You want to travel, you want to get married, um, but it can also be a feeling. So like we were saying in the, um, the slide before, like it could just be that you want to feel differently and you want to feel healthier. You want to feel strong. And that can be your intention as opposed to having something concrete. The other piece with intentions is that I want you to think about creating intentions that people can hold you accountable to. And I'm going to talk to you more about finding an accountability buddy in a couple of slides. But the big thing with intentions is that they tend to be more achievable because for whatever reason, we voice our intentions more than our resolutions. And maybe it is this stigma that like resolutions don't happen, which whoopsies if I'm you know continuing the stigma. But um, intentions tend to be more doable and we don't tend to bite off more than we can chew with intentions, at least in my experience. Okay, so how to set intentions. Start small. And I mean small. This is probably the most important thing that you can do if you're trying to set a concrete intention, a concrete goal. And the reason I say, say start small is if you're trying to do something that you've never done before or that you've done differently, if you don't start small and you set your expectation up really high and you don't meet it, then you've lost all confidence in your ability to do something and you're just going to give up. So the reason why uh, resolutions don't work out. So the next piece is, is to make it a SMART goal. And so for those of you who are unfamiliar, a SMART goal is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time sensitive. So I'm going to travel the world awful because you're not saying where you want to travel. You're not saying with whom you want to travel. You're not saying when you want to travel and by what date. It's just bad, bad goal. But if you say, I want to travel to Seattle with my boyfriend in March when the tulips are in full bloom, that could work. I mean, I don't know what COVID is going to look like in March, but it could. But it's specific. It's measurable. You'll know in March if it happened or not. It's achievable because it, I think it, hopefully it's achievable. Realistic. I'm not saying I want to travel to you know five continents within three months. And it's time sensitive. It has a timestamp on it. The time sensitive piece is, is great because it A, helps you measure, but B, it also helps to hold you accountable and helps your future accountability buddy also hold you accountable. Okay. Then I want you to think of how you want the intention to feel, how you want to feel while you're doing and setting your intention and how you want to feel while you're making progress towards accomplishing it. So for like travel purposes, again, it's probably a bad example because I have no idea when we're going to be able to do this again. But, you know, you start researching places in Seattle. You start looking at the cutest Airbnbs. You start looking to see 
if the tulip festivals are still in bloom this year. Um, even though that's not doing anything right now, you're not benefiting directly from that right now, you're still putting the wheels in motion towards accomplishing your goal. And when we are making progress, we get excited, we feel a little less stressed, we start to feel like things are more tangible and more doable. So that's a piece of it. And it should make you feel proud too, that you are sticking to your intention and that you are actively doing things to get closer to it. Okay? Imagine how it's going to change your life. So if it's just one trip, like maybe it doesn't change your whole year. Maybe it does if it's a really good trip. Um, but how it's going to change your day-to-day -day life, how it might change you on a monthly basis. Things like, you know, your health, like you're going to have more energy. Maybe you're able to keep up with your kids. Maybe you're able to run a race that you've been wanting to run for years but have never been able to. Imagine how that's going to feel. And I really want you to pay attention to how it feels in your body and really there should be this like, oh, like you stand up taller, your shoulders are back, you're more confident, you feel more powerful. That's what a good intention is going to create a sense of. And then lastly, think of what needs to get done, but in chunks. So again, why don't resolutions work? Because we try to do it all at once. No, chunk this out, just like you would chunk out a big project at work, Chunk out what you need in order for your intentions to come to reality. And you know, you're know you going to need to parcel out like each specific intention too. So if you have this huge vision board and there's all these different images on it, pick a couple that you want to look at, but don't try to do everything at once. You're going to get overwhelmed. And then once you have the one, so if you say, okay, I want to start running again. Okay, so start small, run one time a week. That's it. If you want to run more than that, okay. But your goal is just once in the beginning because I want you to keep having the confidence that you can show up. Once that confidence is there, then amp it. You might need to get, going back to those tangible examples, you might need to get running shoes. You might need to get workout pants. You might need to download a new playlist. Um, chunk out your tasks and do it slowly but surely as opposed to feeling like, okay, it's January 2nd, January 3rd, I need to have all this up and running two days later. Like, ah, it's gonna overwhelm you and you're not gonna get started. Okay. okay. Recognize what your strengths are. And you'll understand why I'm saying this in a second. So when we set intentions and goals, some of us start to doubt ourselves and that's common. And because of that, we have to identify our own inner resources. And the first thing that I want you guys to really recognize and applaud yourself for is that you're capable of doing hard things. Look at the year you just survived. And your strengths are going to allow you to feel confident in achieving your New Year's intentions. Also, those challenges that you overcame that I had you think about a few slides before, this is where I really want you to pull from those examples. So whatever challenges that you overcame, what were your inner strengths that allowed you to get through those challenges in a successful manner? So examples would be like your follow through, your self-discipline, your intention to detail. Identify your strengths. And I understand that this is a weird exercise and it might feel like you're like bragging on yourself and that can be uncomfortable. If you're stuck in that and you can't get yourself out of that, ask your loved ones what you, they think your strengths are and ask the people who know you really well. They'll be honest, they'll tell you. And for the areas that we are not perfect humans in, I want you to find your accountability buddies. So they're there to help you. They're there to backfill your blind spots and support you as you're maybe wobbling around a little bit. So they're the ones that are going to keep you going on the hard days and you're going to keep them on the hard days. And what's cool about selecting an accountability buddy is that if you guys decide to come together because you guys want to hold each other accountable on setting an intention, make it an event. So whether it's a journaling practice that you write out what your intentions are, maybe you do a virtual vision boarding thing that it can be really cool because then like your accountability buddy was there from the birth 
of your intention. And that makes them feel more connected to you and you feel more connected to them. And then lastly, get your family in on it. So kids love to think about what the future will hold. Granted, there's is probably going to be like, when can we go to Disney World? Um, but get them thinking about what it is that they want in 2021 and talk to them about resolutions versus intentions and let them decide what they like better. They may like resolutions better because it just sounds more New Year's-y and they've probably been exposed to that idea more, but that's okay. Let them decide. And then decide regardless of intentions or resolutions, where and how you're going to display these throughout the house. And this is a really fun opportunity and you can make this as crafty or as simple as you want. But again, the idea is to display it somewhere where you guys can all see it. And then your family becomes built in accountability buddies. Uh -huh. I still want you to find an accountability buddy outside of your family though, because that can get dicey. Um, and then my last sol or solution, my last thought for you guys is while I don't believe in resolutions, I think remember lutions are very cool and creating a remember lution jar can be really fun for kids. So what that is, is you get like a big jar, a mason jar, whatever, and you put it somewhere where the family has access to it all the time and you have little pieces of paper next to the jar. And so the idea is, is that anytime something happens, something good happens, a good memory is created, someone writes it down and tosses it in the Memberlution jar. So then on December 31st, 2021, as you guys are all getting ready to celebrate New Year's Eve, you guys get to open up all of the little pieces of paper from your Memberlution jar and be able to really reflect on some of the amazing things that happened this year. So again, this is, this is fun. Everyone can do it. If like your kids aren't old enough to whatever, write something, either help them or have them draw something. Maybe that'll be a game to see if they can remember what they were drawing a couple months down the line. Um, and this is great because it also instills a sense of hope that there are going to be good memories that are worth remembering. So that's the big thing too, for you guys to be thinking about as we're a couple weeks into January is there is still hope. Things are going to get better. Things are going to become more normal. And just consider what is it that you need to do to get yourself to a place where you're feeling proud of who it is that you're turning into and what type of world and home you're creating in this new year. So with that, I'm going to leave up my side. If you guys have any questions or concerns after watching all of this, um, feel free to reach out to me. And that is it. I hope you guys have a wonderful 2021 and a happy, happy year. <laughs> Hopefully things even out really soon. Bye.